The task for this video is getting buttons to control and change the colours of my RGB LED, learning all about inputs along the way. However, I won't be starting entirely from scratch. I've already got my Raspberry Pi Pico set up to cycle through my traffic light colours, mixing the non-primary amber using a technique called pulse width modulation. If you want to see how I did that first, just follow the link above and then come straight back here, where without further ado, we can get on with the buttons, or more properly, tactile switches. Let's very quickly survey what we've got already. There's the RGB LED of course. This one is a common cathode type, so we've got an anode for each of the internal LEDs in the cluster, each wired to an output pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico via a current limiting resistor, and the common cathode wired to ground. Now the breadboard is currently pretty busy, so we're going to need to increase the real estate to fit our buttons, which will be these really nice 6mm ones with colour-coded tops. Ultimately, I'll be using red, amber and green, but I've got enough variety to cover each stage of the project, starting with red, green, blue, just like my LED. My intention had been to use a single button to toggle through my colours, but I quickly realised that was outside my coding comfort zone, and this approach actually serves my purposes better. Now you'll notice that each button has four pins, but in fact that's actually two pairs, so we just need to use two of them, the ones that are side by side on the face of the button. Each button, sorry, tactile switch, is going to take the 3.3 volt output from the Raspberry Pi Pico, and when pressed, pass that signal onto one of the input pins. So using one of the common positive rows on the breadboard, I've started by wiring up one side of my red button, the other side going to GPIO pin 16, the one on the corner of the Pico. Then the same for the green button. But like the green element of the LED, I had to settle for a yellow wire, although that's not going to be an issue for long. Then the other side of that button can be wired to pin 17, the one just next door to 16. The one beside that, with the square pad, is one of the ground pins, so we will need to skip that when we come to the blue button, which wires in exactly the same way. One side to the common positive 3.3 volts, the other to GP18 on the Pico, the one the other side of the ground pin. Then with all three elements of the RGB LED wired up, and all three buttons, it's time to get on with some coding, so we can tell them how to react to each other. For this, we're going to need to plug our Pico into a host computer, in my case, a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Now, unlike when we were setting up our Pico, we don't have to hold down that boot cell button. We just need to plug in the micro USB. And that can be confusing for Pico newbies like me, because when we start up our Raspberry Pi, there's no evidence of the Pico on our desktop. To find our files, we need to go through something like Thony. And here on the left-hand side are the programs we set up in the other video. If you can't see that files pane, just go to the view menu and make sure files is ticked. So here we've got three programs. Ignore that top one, that was me experimenting in preparation for the video. The ones we want are main.py and rgb.py. Main is the one that starts automatically when we plug in the Pico, and that's the one that does the pulse width modulation. But we're going to park that for now, saving a copy called pwm.py. We'll be using bits of that later, so let's just check that it's all there, before going ahead and deleting its identical twin. I'm going to be creating a new automatically starting main.py program, but instead of basing this on the PWM, I'm going to start back with the RGB file, as at the moment I can't get my head around anything more advanced than simple on-off for both the buttons and the elements in the RGB LED. And that's where we'll be starting, by defining the red, green and blue buttons, directly underneath the existing definitions for the elements of the RGB LED, and using a very similar language structure. So R underscore button equals pin, open parenthesis, 16, the pin we're going to be using, and then following a comma, pin in, as it's an input rather than an output. And it seems logical to me to finish there, but apparently not to the pin. When the button's pressed, it's certain that the input value is 1, but less sure that it's 0 when not. So we can use one of the internal resistors in the Pico, and this pull down instruction, just to clarify things. So the pin is absolutely certain from a logical point of view, whether the button is pressed or not. And with the line complete, we can copy and paste it for the other two buttons, somewhat slowed down by the fact that I'm usually a Mac user and don't instinctively use the control button for keyboard commands. Then I can just switch over the first letter and then the pin number, 17 for green and 18 for blue, which completes the setup. Now I want to get my button to do something really simple, which is to trigger one little bit of that code I've already written. So if the button's value is equal to one, i.e. it's pressed, the red bit of the LED will come on for two seconds, and then go off again. 
the program will then cycle back to the beginning and check again to see if it's pressed. The light coming on only if it is, otherwise it will just stay off. As an initial test that's all well and good, but what we really want is the light to come on and stay on when the button's pressed. So we're going to need a different instruction. In fact, we're going to simplify the code enormously, and instead of checking if our button's pressed, we just want to see if it's changed, and if it has, toggle our LED. So if it was on, turn it off, and if it's off, turn it on. Then we can go back to the beginning and check again. Now if we do this too quickly, we're in danger of catching our finger still on the button, and getting a double reading, otherwise known as button bounce. We can prevent that with a short sleep. Now, when we press our button, our LED comes on and stays on, and when we press it again, it goes off and stays off. With red sorted, let's get on with our other colours, and I'm copying and pasting that same bit of code, adapting it for our green button and LED, simply changing the R's to G's. So far it seems simple enough. When we press the button, the light comes on, and when we press it again, it goes out. But what about if one of the elements is on already? What we get is a yellow light, that mix of red and green that we've seen before. Later on, we'll want to deliberately mix that colour, but it's not what we want now. So I'm just adding an instruction to each section, ensuring that the other colour is off before we toggle each one. Now when we run the program, you can see that each one turns itself on and turns itself off, and we can cleanly switch between the colours. Now, with all of that working correctly, we can add the blue to the equation, so we can operate all of the primaries in our RGB LED. First up, let's ensure that the blue is off when the other colours are meant to be on, adding an extra line into each of the existing sections of code. Then we can copy and paste one of those chunks for the blue LED and its button, changing the letters as required. So now, when any of the three buttons are pressed, the program will make sure that the other colours are off before toggling the one we want. And we can switch each colour element on and off and easily cycle between each one. Now that's all very good for the primaries, but what we really want is to get more colours. Ultimately, I'm going to get on to colour mixing with pulse width modulation, with my buttons triggering red, amber and green status indicators. But before we get to that, let's try and mix a yellow like we got by accident earlier. So I've got a yellow button instead of the green one, and I want my red and green elements to come on at the same time, toggling their status whenever the button's pressed. Now that's absolutely fine if we treat each individually, turning them on and off, one after the other. But look what happens when we try and switch between them. It's fine if we go from blue to yellow, but if the red's already on, it will toggle off and instead of yellow we'll be left with green. I feel absolutely sure that there's some fancy way of doing this, but as always I want to keep it simple, simple enough for me to understand. And my coding novice brain has come up with this. If each of the elements of the LED starts at zero, the toggle instruction will always turn on the colour we want, leaving the others off. So it doesn't matter what the status of the LED was when the button was pressed. It will always regard it as starting from off. So for all of my if conditions, I'm copying and pasting those same three lines of code, ensuring all three start at zero, rather than just the couple or one that we've had before. Now when we switch between them, the colours stay, even the ones that use two of the elements of the LED. But you may have spotted a drawback, in that I can't actually toggle the elements off again. But I've got a simple solution for this, which is to add a fourth switch that will turn everything off. The wiring for this follows our now familiar pattern, with one of the poles connecting to the 3.3 volts via the common rail on the breadboard. The other we're going to connect to pin 19, which is right next door to the other ones we're using for the other buttons. And we can do the same for the code, just copying one of the other lines and pasting it underneath. Now we need to give it a name, and B has already been taken, so let's go for K, like they use in printing for black, and just change the pin number to 19. We can also copy a big chunk of code for what we want it to do, which is to set a value of 0 for each of the elements of the RGB LED. So I've taken the code for the blue one, changed the letter to K for our black button, and I can just strip out that toggle instruction. We won't be needing that. Now I'm in full control. I can turn each light on, I can switch between them, and I can turn them all off. At this point I want to remind myself that there's a practical application behind this project. What I'm aiming for are traffic light status indicators, so red, amber and green. My yellow's not a bad approximation, but I'm going to try and get a better orangey amber in the next part of the video. But let's finish this bit by switching the blue button to green, and tweaking the code so we've got the correct sequence. Now on to pulse width modulation, PWM. But let's first save what we've got here, giving it a suitable name, as we may well want to refer to it later, and borrow bits of it, you never know.
The code for this is going to come from two sources. We've got main.py, that program that we've just written, and pwm.py, the one that we copied right at the beginning. And it's largely going to be a case of getting the bits we need from one to the other, starting with that pwm import from the machine library. Then we can copy that whole chunk of LED definitions, the one with all the pwm pins and their frequencies, replacing the ones in main.py. The buttons are fine so they don't have to change, but we will need to get in and strip out the things that they do, replacing them with the PWM ones. Now this was all covered in the other video, the one I mentioned at the beginning, but even if this is unfamiliar territory, I suggest stick with us here and go back to it afterwards. Essentially what we're doing is giving each LED element a brightness value of somewhere between 0 and 65535, 0 being off 65535 maximum brightness. The clever bit being that we can have two or more of the elements on at any one time, each at their own brightness level. And here are the values for green and red, which will mix together for a really nice amber colour. Similarly, the green has a bit of blue in it, just a smidge, giving us a more natural colour. Notice also we haven't had to mess around with any toggling, and our code is quite a bit simpler. Once the duty cycle is set, it will remain at that value until another button is pressed. Which brings us to our black button. And it's worth noting that we can't just mix and match the way that we turn our LEDs off. We have to do it the PWM way, which is to assign a duty cycle of zero for each of our colours. We had the green and the blue set up in our previous program. We can just copy and paste those over. But we'll need the red as well, which we can do very easily by switching over the letter. Now, another consequence of the duty cycle for each element not changing until we tell it to, is we can't just ignore the ones we're not using. And in a similar way to the previous iteration, where we set the LED values to be zero for when they're off, we need to fill in all the gaps, with duty cycles of zero for all of the others. Then, when we press a button, we won't be left with any legacy bits from the previous button press. And that's pretty much our code done. So let's put it to the test. We've got the same functionality as before, with our buttons switching between the colours, but those colours are now so much better, with a proper orange for our amber. So let's make sure it has a proper orange button too. So I'm gingerly lifting out the yellow one and replacing it with orange, which of course works fine with the code as it is. But purely for continuity's sake, I want to change those Ys to Os, just in the two places they appear, so not a massive task. And that really is code done. To be honest, I'd expected combining PWM and buttons to be more complicated than that. But it looks like my policy of chopping up the project into manageable chunks has really paid off. The saved PWM file proving invaluable. But with its job done, we can close that and our main.py program, exit Thony and unplug the Pico. When we power it up again, it's automatically going to run the main.py program. And here we've got exactly what we wanted. Proper traffic light colours, all operated at the touch of a button. 